Good morning everyone, once again from the Atacama Desert. It's an extra early start to the day. We got up at 4am in San Pedro de Atacama and we got up that early because we come to a place called El Tatio Geezers, which is around two hours away from the main town. And they say to come here early in the morning when it's really cold and dark because you're able to see the contrast of the geezers even better. And the sunrise is happening just now, so we've arrived at the perfect time. It was 15,000 pesos per person to come here, and it's around minus 9 degrees Celsius right now. So, freezing. Yeah, uh, we can see here it's showing On minus. The dashboard. Yeah, minus 9, uh, but we haven't gone out yet. So I don't know how it's gonna be. We have a lot of layers and then later on during the day I think we're gonna have to take it off but for now let's go in the freezing weather. <laughs> <laughs> All right I think it's light enough now to film on the GoPro. Check this out. Already the best geezer field that we've ever seen. Geezer is the British pronunciation. Oh, that's a different one, isn't it? Yeah, like a little volcano. Yeah. Cool sound. The biggest uh, geyser field in the southern hemisphere and the third biggest in the world. Man, I love this stuff. Yeah, it's really cool and really unique. Uh, I mean, we've seen some geysers before here in this trip and also in Iceland. But I think this area is a lot bigger, so it's very, very cool. Yeah, this is the biggest one for us. I'm not sure where the second and first biggest ones are in the world. Whoa, that one's bubbling big time. <laughs> Some hot water for the tea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even with all these layers, I'm still just freezing. I've got like a t-shirt on, thermal layers, jumper, hoodie, coat. <laughs> still damn cold. So this is one of the big ones. I forgot to mention that this is also the highest Giza area in the world because we're around 4,300 meters above sea level. The highest elevation for a Giza field. I think this might be the last time we're above 4,000 meters for many months now. <laughs> it's never a consistent amount of uh, like steam or smoke coming out, right? No, no, but it's like a lot, but sometimes a lot, a lot, sometimes <laughs> just a lot. Yeah, I mean, look here now, the people are disappearing. Is it warm inside again? Yeah, it is. It's like a heater. Just waiting for this one to get real big. Like I said, it's not always the same amount. So before it was like really pumping out. My fingers are like frozen. frozen. It's painful. Yeah, mine too. These gloves are no good really for this kind of cold weather. So we saw people warm in the hands before. Nice. Oh, it's so good. Really? Really. It's not like boiling hot, it's just warm. But... Oh man, that is nice. Oh. Fingers recovered. Yeah, now I can move my fingers again. <laughs> <laughs> Your breath is like a geezer. Smelly? Smelly like a geezer. No. <laughs> Thank you. 
So in the leaflet that they gave us when we entered, it says that there's 80 geezers. Listen to the sound of that one. There's even another parking place too. Like there's two parking lots. There used to be like a pool that you could swim in here, a thermal pool. It's closed right now. Not sure why. Oh, look at this one. Wonder how many times I've said wow already. <laughs> yeah, this is that big one that we could see. I think it's so big because it's pretty wide as well. The area. This one's kind of orange too, isn't it? Yeah. It's so smoky that you can't really see what's it, what's in there. <laughs> <laughs> Hard to see inside. Mini waterfall. So that's funny, the completely boiling water that's coming from there is coming down here, but by the time it gets here, it's already turned to ice. Yeah, I'm not sure how far we're gonna walk. Seems like you can walk for like 30 minutes and it's still geezers everywhere. So it's definitely a place to spend an hour or two. Oh, what is this? The pit. Come to the other section now. This is where the other parking lot is. Little stream coming through here. And this is where the thermal pool is that you're not allowed in anymore. Man, I wish you could go in there right now. Warm up my toes. Yeah, so it seems like there's no water in there. Yeah, but the, there is running water over there. I think they're just not putting inside the pool. Yeah, I don't know if it got too hot or something. Yeah, so this sign has a bit of information about the geysers. Temperatures can reach 185 Fahrenheit. 85 degrees Celsius. Yeah, it seems like on this side, they're way, way bigger. They go way higher than on the previous side. So we're just gonna walk around here and then I think we're gonna head to a town that we passed on the way here. See if they have breakfast. We need to eat. So the little village that we've stopped at is called Machuca, a lot more smaller than we thought. I asked the lady at the entrance how many people live here and she said like 8 or 10 people, so really tiny. I think these are some places that you can stay in if you want some accommodations. There's a cafe there so we're gonna eat there, just gonna check out the tiny village first. It's a cool looking little church at the top. Yes, yeah, so I think it's basically just this road here. And that's about it. I guess all the houses don't have people living in them because there's definitely more houses than you need for eight or nine people here. That's a museum. Don't think it's open right now. Probably too early. Not sure if it's open. Ah, it's closed. <laughs> have to just look from here. 
Yeah, I think it's made of like the mud brick. Cool little traditional church. Anyway, we'll head back to the start and go to that little restaurant. A nice warm coffee will go down nicely. Yeah, it will be really, really good. Need to wake up too, really tired. I think we only slept like three, four hours. Cool little place. Yeah, with nice music. I always like the flute. We've heard it all the time in Chile, Bolivia, Peru. The flute music. Officially a warm hand style. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we got some empanadas coming as well. Three empanadas and these coffees for 11,000 pesos. So our next stop is kind of in the similar region as the geysers. It's called Termas La Puritana, some natural hot springs. It's in some really beautiful canyon area. So I think we're gonna be swimming down there somewhere. We booked it online, it was 30,000 pesos per person. So quite a steep price compared to everything else that we've been paying for. So hopefully it's good. <laughs> it's been really amazing driving around here though. It seemed like every 10 minutes, the landscapes would completely change. So now we're in an area where it was all kind of like this, this orange rocky formation. So just like Bolivia, there's many lagoons with flamingos here. We hadn't been visiting any so far since we saw so many in Bolivia already, but just driving past one, we already saw hundreds. So that was cool. Yeah, so at least it looks like the infrastructure is good for what we're paying. Walking decks, some buildings there, changing rooms. And here is the thermal waters, I guess. Wow, it's beautiful. Yeah, I didn't expect the water to be so clear. I like how enclosed it is with the plants. Yeah, different vegetation. So this one is 30 degrees Celsius. And I think the eighth one, the lowest one, is 25 degrees. This seems just perfect already though. Yeah, I think the other ones may be a bit too cold. With this outside temperature. Yeah. What a nice waterfall too. This is the first time that I see a waterfall with warm water. Yeah, I think so too. Thermal waterfall. Yeah, really cool. Oh man, when you get out though, <laughs> it is cold. We're going to check out some of the, the other pools now. Garo's running. Whew, real cool breeze. Oh, it's not that much colder. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> yeah, there's less people on this one. The pools are all different shapes and sizes, so some of them were quite busy. If there's a big group, like a tour group, 
for some reason nobody wanted to come to this one. So I think this will be the final pool that we go in, the coolest waterfall so far. I think we went in about five overall, almost all of them. Yeah, this one's a legit waterfall. Like almost two waterfalls. Yeah, it is, double waterfall, two in one. Beautiful. All of them are beautiful, really. All the pools. So it is the next morning and we've driven about two hours south from San Pedro de Atacama. We come to a place called Piedras Rojas. We're not there yet, we just stopped at this viewpoint. So it's another one of those ultra turquoise lagunas with salt flats. Kind of like what we saw in Bolivia. And this time we're right on the border with Argentina. The geezers before were on the border with Bolivia. It's kind of like an area where all three of the countries join together. So this place is also known as Sala de Aguas Calientes. And we had to pay online to come here. It was 10,000 per person. Kind of confusing here in the Atacama. For example, this one we paid online, but then we had to stop at a city on the way. Not even a city. It was like a little village called Socairi or Soquer. Not sure how you pronounce it. Then we had to show like the QR code and they gave us the ticket. And then we come here. And then in other places it was different. Which places did we have to pay our line? For Moon the, Valley? The Moon Valley and also the the Puritama, the hot springs that we went yesterday. We had to book in advance because of the time slots. Stuff like that. Like you said, it's a bit complicated. But not the geezers, right? No. Not we the just geezers. paid at the site. We paid, we paid over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so some places you can pay at the site, others it's online. It's best just to look online. So it's obviously called Piedras Rojas for obvious reasons, the red rocks. Kind of different to the Laguna places that we went in Bolivia. The contrast of colors is amazing though. The whites, turquoise blues, some kind of mild greens, reds. And I mentioned at the geezers that it was the last time that we were going to be above 4,000 meters. But guess what? This place is also above 4,000 meters. So. Now is officially the last time because after this we're going to the capital, Santiago. Only got a few more videos coming from here and South America. It's going to be the end of the South America trip on to somewhere new.
about this part is beautiful. It almost looks like a white sandy beach, salt beach. You're not allowed in the water here though, no swimming. Since it has the name Aguas Calientes, I don't know if the water's warm. I don't see any flamingos around in this laguna. Not even over there in the distance. Here's another one of those beach-like areas. The Caribbean beach. Certainly won't be seeing scenery like this anytime soon. Not even sure if scenery like this exists anywhere else in the world, this mixture. Maybe only this region of uh, Bolivia and Chile. So it's 11 p.m. now. Don't know if you can see me that well on the on the GoPro. And we've just driven like 20, 30 minutes away from San Pedro. And we're on like a desert road now because we want to do some stargazing. I mentioned before that this is one of the best areas to see stars in the world, the Atacama Desert. Even in San Pedro, when you look up at night, you see loads of stars, but yeah, it should be even better here. Kind of creepy though, because we're in the middle of nowhere, completely pitch black outside. But we're gonna do some photography, see if it's any good. So we're not really used to doing night photography, of stars at least, but you could probably see from some of the pictures that we took just how stunning it was. By far the best stargazing that we've ever done. It was just like millions and millions of stars. Many shooting stars too. You even saw in some of the pictures that we captured the shooting star, you could see like the, the line and the Milky Way. We got lucky that the Milky Way was in the perfect position we went exactly at the right time and yeah that's our first time seeing the Milky Way what I didn't know is that you can even see it with your own eyes on the camera it looks clearer but even with your own eyes you can see it I, I didn't know that I thought you had to have like a telescope or a good camera so yeah just really remarkable and this entire week has just been absolutely incredible in the Atacama Desert and Uyuni We've just seen so many amazing natural landscapes, different things. It's a, it's a lot to take in, in in a single week. If you watched our videos, you'll know that we began in the biggest salt flat in the world, in Uyuni. And there they had other weird things like the giant cactus island, really bizarre. And then we just saw many different colored lagoons, like beautiful turquoise lagoons, pink lagoons thousands of flamingos and then there were the salt pools hot springs and just the incredible mountainous landscape so yeah so many different things to see definitely recommend coming to this area and as we mentioned earlier in the video now we're going to be heading to santiago so i think things are gonna start to look a bit more normal but from what we've seen it's also a very beautiful place so looking forward to that if you like this video just drop a like as usual to support us subscribe to see more videos like this follow us on instagram and facebook and we'll see you in the next one